So this video is mostly about grub worms, and I'm going to talk about grub worms and grub worm treatments and how they affect those of you north and south, east and west. So if you're somebody that's here just for the tip, go ahead and go to this point in the video right here, and that way you can fast forward and get through all the other stuff. But for those of you that are real lawn care nuts, it's a double rainbow. All right, let's try this. This is my new studio, still setting it up. I guess you can call it my studio, but I don't really have good audio in here yet, but let's just see how this goes. I also don't look quite as formidable without my beard. I think I need to grow that back out before we shoot another one of these. The lighting doesn't look too good on this old man's skin. Okay, so there's a few things I wanna to address today on grub worms. I'm gonna link in the description below to the full video that I did on grubs, but there's been a few changes since then and a few things that I wanted to address that I haven't previously addressed when talking to you guys about grub worms. So the first thing I'm gonna do is address those of you with cool season lawns, those of you up in the north, the east, the midwest, those of you with Kentucky bluegrass, perennial rye, tall fescue, those varieties. For some reason, there's this misconception that you need to apply grub worm preventatives earlier and earlier every year, and in fact, I think that the big box stores proliferate this because they bring out imidacloprid products in the early spring and they start selling them. In addition to that, homeowners, you guys, you know, you want to get things done. You want to make sure you get that grub app in and you think, well, if I'll just get it done earlier, I'll be better. And I've actually seen recommendations to apply imidacloprid applications in May. And I'm going to tell you that's too early. Now, you guys know I do recommend imidacloprid, also called Merit. It's the industry standard, has been for a long time and still is. You're only going to get three months of efficacy in the soil with that product, which means after, you know, even when you start getting into month three, it starts to degrade and it's not going to work quite as well as it would have in months one and two. So when you move up that time frame into May, or as some of you guys do in March and April, you have no coverage now in the real zone of when the grub worm populations are going to be doing most of their damage. Because remember, the main problem that you have up north are the white grubs. They're annual. They live one season and die the next. That's really the main problem you have. Now, down here in the south, we have other uh, grub worms that come from different uh, scarab beetles that actually can have a three-year overwintering type process. So different different strategy down here in the south that we'll talk about by there in a minute. But for those of you up north, really imidacloprid is what you need. You need to apply that in June and water it in. And then that way you're covered through July, August, and September, which is when those guys are going to be doing most of their feeding. Let's talk quickly about the spring grub worm. Those are typically not a concern because your lawn should be so vigorous in the spring that it just grows right through any damage that would be there. However, if you do have damage from spring grub worms, then you're going to want to use a curative product for that. And I'll link in the description below to a couple different ones that work just fine. But if anything, just get old fashioned seven. Seven works great as a curative on grubs, and it also kills a lot of other insects. It can be used in your flower beds and in a lot of other places around the landscape. So if you're not sure where to find the active ingredient on what you're buying, it's usually down in the bottom left or bottom right on the front part of the bag. I want you to watch for that too, because there are some deceiving labelings out there that I've seen, and I don't know if they do it on purpose, but see this Spectricide product right here? See how it says kills on contact on one side of the bag, and on the other it says season-long control? But look at the small print there. Season-long control is of ants. That's because it employs gamma sahiathrin, I think is how you pronounce that. It'll kill on contact almost all those insects. It'll kill chinch bugs on contact. It'll definitely kill grubs on contact, all that kind of stuff once you get it watered in. But season-long control, no way. It doesn't have that kind of residual, except for in the case of ants, according to the label here. I don't know a lot about this chemistry, but I did want to point out that this is not a season-long control for grubs, only for ants, but it can be used as a curative for grubs. So just something to think about. Make sure you're not really reading all the packaging that all over and then what you're doing is you're looking down in the right or the left on looking at what that active ingredient actually is and now for those of you down south we have a little bit longer growing season we can also have again I mentioned some of those other types of grub worms that live a little bit longer and have a little bit longer life cycle with that I would also still recommend imidacloprid but just realize that in the spring of the next year you may need to do some curative type applications you may need to just pay attention a little bit closer but either way those of you down south your best time for a grub application is still going to be that June time frame. Just because we live a little bit further south, for some reason, the May-June bug is still the May-June bug. They might come out just a little bit earlier for us, but not too much earlier. So again, most of your grub damage is going to start happening sometime after that June, July, August period. So we want to make sure that we have enough coverage to last us that time. Now, one other thing I'm going to recommend, and this could go for you guys up north, I'm assuming that this product is available to you, but definitely down here in the south, 
is this Bear Advanced product that I picked up that's got the imidacloprid that's going to go ahead and prevent the below ground insects like the grubs, but it also contains another active ingredient that'll kill anything that's in the lawn right now, including chinch bugs, which are a concern. And that product is Sefluthrin. Now, Sefluthrin has been around for a long time. It's a pyrethroid based product. It's used in a lot of different pest control applications around houses and everything else, not just in the lawn care industry. The good news with Sefluthrin is, is it will also kill sod webworms. So those of you that are up north, if you can get a hold of this product and you have a sod webworm problem, this will help you with that as well. So you're gonna get a product here that's not only gonna prevent with the imidacloprid, but it's gonna have a little bit of a kill activity to it as well on sod webworm. Chinch bug can also be a problem up north, as well as any other insects that might invade your lawn. One thing to be aware of though are application rates. It covers 10,000 square feet if you're worried about ants, fleas, and ticks but only 5,000 for all other listed pests, which includes grub worms. Well, thanks a lot for watching this episode all about grub worm treatments for the year. Now, I'd like to take a minute and recommend to you guys, once again, get your lawn soil tested using Soil Savvy's test kits available on Amazon. The Soil Savvy test kit is friendly to homeowners. It's quick and easy and really can help you set a baseline for treatments going forward. I'll put a link in the description below where you can pick up your own Soil Savvy test kit today. And with that, I'm going to end this video. I'm going to leave you with a little montage of me doing some grass clipping, cleaning out a sprinkler head. I want to wish all the mom lawn care nuts out there a beautiful and happy Mother's Day. And as always, thanks for watching. Leave your comments and questions below. I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. I'll see you in the lawn.